it's Eliza and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to share with you some kind of tips and things like that um, to do with kind of how to achieve really high grades at GCSE. So a bit background about my GCSEs, I know that I was the weird year that didn't technically take them, although my school did constantly test us throughout kind of the GCSE course. So the grades that I did get would have been a very accurate representation of what I would have got in the exams had I taken them. We also did mocks that were the exact papers that the previous GCSE year had taken and we didn't have any questions cut out and I got very highly on my mocks. So as you can probably tell from the title, I did get six nines at GCSE. I'm not gonna say I know everything about kind of the best ways to get nines, but I am going to tell you the things that I personally did to achieve those grades. All my other grades were ranging from sevens to nines. Yeah, let's kind of get into it and I'll show you some of the tips and things that I did to achieve those grades. So my first tip would be to write up your notes as soon as possible. Um, I kind of recommend doing this kind of the summer before you go into year 11, if you haven't started already, or even just kind of get into the habit of writing up notes as soon as you can after you've made them so that way it kind of stays in your head a bit more. So the principle behind this is basically that you're using your time wisely and when it gets to say March of year 11 you're not trying to make notes on everything in your GCSE course instead of just kind of revisiting things because there are so many people that leave their revision to the last minute and don't have enough time to make real in-depth notes and even if you don't want to properly start revising until kind of February March time if you've written up your notes you don't have to worry about rewriting so you can just shove them into flashcards and it will make revision a whole lot easier. Tip number two kind of links back to the first tip and that is to revisit your year nine work because so many schools start the GCSE course in year nine or even if it's just science you start that in year nine but I promise you by the time you get into year 11 if you haven't gone over the stuff from year nine unless it's in the front of the textbook you will not remember it so by going over this either again in the summer before year 11 or whenever you've got a spare minute and just add it onto your revision then it will mean that you're not in a mad panic in Easter thinking oh no I haven't done the year nine work and it will just make revision a whole lot easier because it'll come back to you quicker. Tip three is to look up your specifications and either make a checklist or just print them out. So you can find specifications online by literally just typing in your exam board, your subject and GCSE nine to one. Um, this is really handy because it does act as a checklist of topics that you have and haven't done yet. And it means that you can look at your revision and think, oh, well, I haven't done cells yet or I haven't done indices yet and it also kind of acts as a topic tracker so you can think oh I don't really know anything about plant cells but I know an awful lot about animal cells. They also have little bits of information a like brief overview of the topic and it's really key to kind of know what that is because it's written by the exam board and you don't want to get into the exam and look at a question and think oh no I don't know it and find out that it was actually on the specification. So tip number four is to try and condense your notes into one page summaries. So this is really handy when you come to revise because you've only got the information that you need. It's also easier when you come to put information in flashcards because as I said, you've got the information that you need and you're not having to worry about, oh no, do I need this bit? Do I need this bit? It is literally the bare bones of information. It's also a really key skill trying to summarize large bits of text into one page. And by having that singular page of information, you can easily carry it around and look at it and think, oh, I don't know where my cells notes are. And you've just got it all on one page instead of flicking through pages and pages of notes in your notebooks. So tip five is to put information and notes onto flashcards. So as I said before, you can use your summary notes to put them on flashcards so you've only got the bare information. Now the key thing with flashcards is you don't want to overload them with tons of information. You just want little bullet points of things so that you can pick them up, have a brief look at and you know test yourselves on you them. I will put a video up on my channel in the next few weeks about how I make my notes and that will include summary pages and how I condense into flashcards so if you don't quite know how to do it or you don't know the best way to do it then I will have kind of how I do it on there so you can check that out if you want. 
So the next tip is kind of based around languages, but you can apply it for other subjects. So tip six is to learn your language vocab. I cannot stress how important this is. By learning your vocab, you will have a word bank that you can use in exams and written exams. And if you've got a translation, you can look at the vocab and think, oh, I actually know that word. Because if you don't have any vocab, you will not do well in your language exams. And by having that vocab, you can enhance your writing answers instead of just using the generic. Um, a good way to learn vocab, if you don't know how, is Quizlet. This video is not sponsored by Quizlet, but I really enjoy using it. It's basically this online flashcard thing where you can put in your vocab. So you've got the term and definitions. You can use this for other subjects as well. I use it for my politics exams and history dates. But for learning vocab, it's so key because you've got the option for flashcards. You've got the option to be tested on them and you've got the option for a learn feature. There's also pretty fun games on there if you want to learn your vocab in a rather unconventional way. Tip seven is for diagrams. So when you draw diagrams, make sure to write questions to go along with them. This will help you apply the knowledge that you're learning from the diagrams into exam questions. So when you get into the exam, you will know how to apply these things into the questions instead of just listing off the different elements of the diagram. So for example, the digestive system, the exam board are gonna want you to be able to say how the digestive system works instead of just listing off the organs. So by being able to answer the questions, you're not only reinforcing the knowledge, but you're also learning how to apply it into questions. So tip eight is to learn exam technique. This is especially helpful in essay based subjects because you will be able to have a structure about how to lay out your essay in your head. So when you get into the exam, you're not trying to think about how to structure it. You've already got the technique and the structure in your head, so you just need to write it down. It'll also help you get really top marks in all the exams because you will know what the examiner is looking for. So for example, history, they will want a point, an explanation, evidence, and then a link back to the question or to the next point. By doing this, you will be able to achieve top grades in the mark scheme and Again, by learning the structure, you won't be stuck in the exam thinking, ah, I don't know how to write this because you will have that structure in your head. So you just think, oh, I just need to adapt this. Number nine is to look at top student answers from previous years. So this will kind of help you see what things they did to get those top grades and you'll be able to transfer that into your own work and look at things and think, oh, well, all the people that got eights and nines did this. So maybe if I do this, I might get an eight and nine. Um, it's also really helpful because you get new ideas about what to look for, especially in English. You may think, oh, well, they've analysed this poem in this way. I hadn't thought of that before. So then you'll be able to transfer that again into your own work and achieve top marks. You can always find past student answers on Google or even just ask your teachers because they will have a long, probably a long list of their previous students that got top marks and they will be able to say, yep, here's a bunch, this is what they all did, have a look through them and I promise you it'll really help and it'll get a feel for kind of what a top mark answer looks like. So tip number 10 is to do practice papers. Even if you don't really want to do practice papers to start off with, at least do practice questions and slowly build up to practice papers. So this means that you'll be able to get a feel for what it will be like in the exam and what kind of questions come up in each of the GCSE papers. So that on your GCSE day or on your marks, you're not going into the exam totally blind and you actually know kind of what to expect. It also means that you can practice under time conditions and see if you need to speed up the way you write and it'll be able to highlight any topics that you may not have had a great knowledge on and you'll have time to go over it instead of just going into the exam and coming out thinking, oh, I didn't really know that and not being able to do anything about it. So my final tip, which is arguably the most important tip is to ask for help especially ask your teachers because they are there to help you and if you're struggling on a topic they won't want you to struggle in silence and they are there to explain things to you if you don't understand if you don't feel comfortable with going to your teachers use google you've got the whole internet 
right at your fingertips. So use it as a really helpful resource in looking up, I don't know, how to do this question or how to work out this problem. Because if you don't use the resources that you are given, you're not gonna get very far if you don't understand a topic. Also ask your teachers for any resources that they would recommend because your teachers probably have a stash of resources that they want to give you, but might not give them to you in class. So if you go up to them and say, do you have any resources that would help me in this area or for this topic? They will probably give you a stash load of papers or email over a stash load of resources that you can use to your advantage. So use your teachers, they are there to help you. And that concludes the video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you can use some of these tips into your own work and achieve as highly as you can at GCSE. Um, if you did like this video, then please hit that like button and subscribe down below to my channel if you would like to see more videos from me. Again, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.